Hello, my name is Rick. I'm April's dad. We are going to build a gantry in my garage. I've always wanted one where I could hook a chain hoist and lift up my mower to change belts or blades or lift up your golf cart to work underneath it. So in this video this today, this is what we're going to be doing. Great job, Dad. All right, let's move things out of the way. Here we go. Like my dad said, a garage gantry. Here's the end result so you can see what we're going after. It's an I-beam placed on top of two columns that are bolted to the floor. Then a trolley and hoist can run along the I-beam and be used to lift things up. If you plan to tackle this project, a lot of people go ahead and make their unit mobile so that it can be moved around. However, Dad didn't like the idea of it being mobile and wanted his to be bolted to the floor. So that's how we're going about this one. The first thing we did was pull some measurements across the stud bay we'd be placing the gantry. And this is so that we can cut down some boards to go across that bay. We'll use these later on to help secure the top beam to. While I set up the super jaws, Dad grabbed the material and saw, and we cut the few pieces to length. I spaced them equally across the length that the I-beam would be placed, then attached them with four screws to the bottom quarter of the truss. All right, next step was to lift the beam into place. We're using a small I-beam from a local steel supplier and I did have them cut it to length before I went and picked it up. This beam isn't super heavy duty, but it's more than enough for what my dad will be doing. We wanted to get the beam into place first before cutting each one of the side columns to height. And to do that, we first ran some straps through the trusses to create some cradles. Then we took our time to stab one end of the beam into one of these cradles and then the other. With the beam loosely in place, we roughed in the position left to right on where dad wanted it. Then as one of us lifted up on the beam, the other one pulled the slack out of the strap. If you do this project, it would have probably been better to use ratchet straps because this kind of strap without the ratchet wasn't enough to pull 100% of the slack out. However, next we grabbed some Bessie clamps and again, as one of us lifted, the other one secured the beam flush up against the cross members we stuck into place earlier. Even though it felt secure in the clamps, we still left the straps up just as backup while we worked on the next step, which was cutting down the columns. Next up was making the columns. These will be made from some leftover two by six material from a carb port I built my folks two years ago. To mount them to the garage floor, I sketched up a mounting bracket quick in a 3D modeling software and then cut them out of my Torchmate plasma table. If you don't have a table, then of course you can use a handheld plasma cutter. But if you do have a table, I have a free DXF file on my website. I started by laying the plate on the ground, then taking an exact measurement that the column needed to be cut to. Once I had that, I used the chop saw to cut it to size. Then to make situating the plate on the column go quickly, I found center on the mounting plate and made crosshairs. Then did the same on the 2x6 material. This way I could set the plate on the ground and line up the marking on both to center it. You can see that I'm using magnets to help hold it in place where I want it. Now to stick things together. I'm using my Lincoln Electric Power MIG 210 and I started off by tacking it in two places then having my dad re-level in both directions while I added more tack whenever it was set correctly. Now I could remove the magnets and weld all four sides shut. Bottom done, now time to move to the top. In dad's garage, he has a chest of drawers we needed to work around. Not only making sure the column wouldn't hit, but also the larger mounting plate at the bottom. We also moved the plate and column over enough so that a drill can get in between these two. Once we had that spot set, we placed the column and moved the I-beam on top of it, making sure that it was sitting square. Then, as dad read level, I could get up to the top and tack and then weld it shut just like the bottom. And that's one down. I repeated the steps on the other side for the second beam, first welding on the bottom plate, then sticking the column into place and welding it to the I-beam. Dad has his garage set up so that his workbench splits the middle of his space and by the second column being on the outside of it, it will give him an entire bay of the garage to be able to use the gantry after it's complete. Alright, the columns are done. 
To stick it in place permanently, we're going to drill some holes in the garage floor and place in some anchor bolts. We first grabbed the bolts and marked off a drill depth on the bit using some tape. We used a hammer drill aiming for center on each one of the slots in the base plate and drilled down to this tape. All it does is give you a visual reference for a rough depth each hole needs to be. Next, we stuck a washer and nut on each bolt and hammered them into place. You wanna place the nut on while you're hammering them in to protect the threads from getting damaged. You'll see that I left the nut sitting at the very top. Once the bolt reaches its depth, then we threaded the bolt on completely and tightened it up. This thing felt really secure as is, but still, we wanted to go ahead and stabilize the top to the rafter somehow. For this, we placed these shoe pieces only on the left and right sides of the gantry. They also act as hard stops so that you can't accidentally pull the trolley off that I-beam. Next, we assembled the trolley, then attached the hoist. The trolley is only $60 at Harbor Freight, and that's before using their 20% off coupon. So in my opinion, it's worth adding on just to make moving the hoist quick and easy. The last thing we did was get rid of some of this awful looking rust. To make this job go quick, we threw a bristle cup attachment on the grinders, then got after it. Oh, and my dad also placed a hook on the wall over on the right hand side to give him a place to loop the chains around when storing. Yeah, this is great. Whatever I want to use it, I just pull it to the center, lift whatever I need to lift, and I'm finished. Throw it out of the way. You know, for as much function as one of these is going to give my dad, it really didn't take that long. It took, what, about three hours? About three hours. About three hours. So if you're needing one, then I hope that this video has helped you out. Uh, that's it for this one. If you want a full cost breakdown, there is one listed over on my website. There is a link for you down below. Hope that y'all enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. <laughs> By the way, check out the new shirt. Shop, shop. Get to it, folks. This is a shirt for all of you go-getters who don't like to waste any time. Or maybe it's a shirt for those that need a reminder to get out and get it done. Either way, if you'd like to support what I'm doing here, then buying a t-shirt is a great way to do that. The shirt does come in both male and female cuts. There's a link for you down in the description. Hey, you're blocking the view, bud.